Welcome to our tutorial about how to set up Cubase to receive your audio signals. The first thing you need to do is to make sure Cubase knows which audio interface it needs to communicate with. Be sure your audio interface is properly connected and powered up before you launch Cubase. Select Devices from the main menu strip at the top of the window and scroll down to Device Setup. The Device Setup dialog window opens. On the left is a list of devices, and on the right are some settings and options for each device. Let's click on VST Audio System from the Devices tree on the left. The VST Audio System page appears on the right. From the ASIO Driver drop-down menu, select your audio hardware driver. There may be several options here that all refer to the same hardware. After you switch to a new driver, you need to click Apply. Your interface will appear in the Devices tree under VST Audio System. Now you should be able to select the driver from the Devices list to open its Settings Control Panel if you need to make further adjustments. Otherwise, you can do this from the Control Panel of your PC or under System Preferences on your Mac. Let's close the M-Audio Control Panel and return to the VST Audio System page. If you're going to be using several audio apps at the same time, you might want to activate the Release Driver when Application is in Background option. This lets other programs access your audio interface. If Apply is active, click that and then click OK. The Device Setup dialog window closes. Next thing to do is set up our input and output ports. A port is a single or mono physical connection. It's where you plug your mic, your guitar, your mixer, etc. The number of ports on an audio interface varies widely from model to model. At minimum, you need one port to record sound and one output port for playing it back. Let's go back to the Device Setup window. Select Devices, scroll down to Device Setup. Let's select My Audio Interface from the Devices list. As you can see, Cubase and my device are already communicating with each other. All my input and output ports are already listed here. If you've got a lot of ports, your list might look pretty unwieldy because too many ports would be displayed on this page. You can hide a port by unchecking the visible checkbox. Keep in mind that this disables the port and prevents you from using it. If you try to hide a port that you're already using, you'll be asked to confirm if this is what you really want. You can also rename the ports to make them easier for you to identify at a glance. Just click on its name in the Show As column and then type in a new name. Press Enter to accept. For example, if you've got a port you consistently use for your mono microphone input, you could call it Mic. If you have ports you will consistently use for your stereo keyboard input, then you can name them accordingly too. Let's rename my second analog in port. I'll call it input 2. And now let's click OK to close the device setup dialog window and apply my changes. By the way, there's another option I want to look at on the VST audio system page. Devices, device setup, go back to VST audio system. Under Advanced Options, there's a checkbox for multiprocessing. When this is checked and your system has more than one CPU, Cubase will distribute its processing load evenly to all the available CPUs. Cubase has got full support for working with multiprocessors, you see. This concludes our lesson on setting up Cubase to receive your audio signals. In our next lesson, we're going to be looking at the next step in configuring Cubase to receive audio signals, connecting your ports to the Cubase virtual buses. In Cubase, we do this through what are called VST connections.